In this video, I'm going to be unboxing the Awada Micron Takumi, spelt T-A-K-U-M-I. And you can see with the chart here that this one sits within the extreme detail and the fine range, and it goes slightly into the medium. But I would definitely be using any of these Microns for fine and extreme detail. And then a bit of the info off the back of the box. It's a dual action airbrush, absolute precision for extreme detail, custom matched hand tuned headset system, 12 to 15 psi optimal working pressure, ergonomic main lever, preset handle with crown cap dock and the Awada pistol grip filter for clean dry air. So a bit lower than what I would usually run my microns at which would be 18 to 20 psi. Let's go ahead and take a look what's inside. So we have the Awada cloth, it's a nice microfiber cloth smooth there with the uh, branding on there so to open the box just slide that across and lift so all nicely displayed in the box got a card here that shows that it's been tested by kirk liebecker the awada sticker kirk's testing sprayer and it's also numbered the manual shows the different micron airbrushes a bit of information features which i'll show you anyway so it's just pretty much summarized and probably the most useful thing is your exploded diagram a lot of these you can find as pdfs on the awada sites i know that the anest awada australia site definitely has downloadable pdfs if you need these obviously have the airbrush with the takumi written on there japan Feels nice and smooth as you'd expect from a brush at this price point. You've got the Awada written there on the top as well and the Anest Awada on the other side there. It's nice that it's inscribed with gold, a little bit different. And we have the Awada nozzle wrench. I would not be using this for my Micron. It's too dangerous, it's too easy to snap the thread when you're replacing your nozzle. I would instead highly recommend the Awada nozzle wrench and this one fits over the front of the airbrush. You can see it there and it's a lot safer to swap them out clean them and remove your nozzle. Go with this one instead of the one that comes with it. Now this is the pistol grip moisture filter. So you hook your hose up to here and then this screws onto the airbrush and you've got your little drainage valve there. These are good for just capturing that last little bit of moisture. I personally don't use them. Um, I know a lot of people love using them because they sort of help when you grip the airbrush. Um, I'll hook it up later and I'll show you. But again, personal preference, but at least it comes with it. And then we have the side cup, a lot bigger than what was on the C MSB and still a pop off lid so you just put your fingers behind that lip there pop it off when you purchase it it is a bit tight so just um, note that it does actually come off it doesn't unscrew it can be adjusted too once it's fitted to the airbrush and obviously the great quality case where you can safely store your airbrush and it's got that nice brushed look on there with the emblem and on the rear it does have these little rubberized feet so it doesn't go slipping on your bench so you can easily sit it down it's not going to move around and definitely a lot more attractive than the predecessor which was this red finish inside hasn't changed that much as you can see pretty much the same the other thing to note the lube i don't personally use it but again totally up to you if you do okay a couple of things to talk about first before we start got the rear here where you can wind it out you've got settings on there they're marked with numbers so you can pick which way you like to set it up and you'll know that that's basically how far you can pull the trigger back so if I wind that in, you can see that's now going to stop my trigger from coming all the way back. I like to have mine completely wound out and just control the trigger action. So pressing down for air, obviously, and pulling back for paint. The more you pull back, the more paint's going to come out. Another great thing is these rubber caps. You know, I'm a huge fan of these. And the crown cap, which is designed in a way so that you can use the airbrush as is, leaving that on, and get into those little grooves to clean your needle and your tip drying. But personally, I like to remove it. Do this with caution, and you can see how fine that needle is. If you drop your brush, that's going to totally be stuffed up. And I believe this model runs the same setup as the CMSB, which is a 0.18mm needle nozzle setup. Correct me if I'm wrong. Another great feature with the later model Microns is that you can screw this onto this back section here of your handle and you're not going to lose your air cap. It's also got the cutaway handle so for easy access and cleaning so you can press down for air, pull back and blast out anything that you need to using that cutaway. I've got a video on that and I'll link that up in the description as well as 
dollars to some of the products that I'm showcasing here. So when the needle is exposed like this, this is where I love these rubber caps. Carefully place that over the top and at least now if I drop it, it's got a much better chance of surviving. So one of the other main differences with the Takumi versus the regular CMSB is that it's got a more compact head design versus this particular design. You can already see this is extended a little bit more. That's a lot shorter. And if I run a ruler on it, we've got the original CMSB. We're coming in at just over two inches, whereas doing the same thing here, we're under two inches on the Takumi. So having the shorter body design is just going to give you a little bit more of a controlled feel because you're a lot closer from your trigger finger to the artwork and it just feels a lot more comfortable. You've got less of the body of the airbrush in the way, so your line of sight is a lot more direct. Another feature which hasn't really changed much is the trigger. So it's got that ergonomic shape. It's the squared off trigger with the rounded edges. I like to run my finger over the edge like that and work that way with the trigger control rather than putting my finger straight on there. So this CMSB has the short Drew Blair trigger in there. So you can see that's completely rounded off trigger. I do like the feel of this trigger. I much prefer the rounded triggers than the square ones. Now, if you're left or right handed, you can remove this. It does look like it screws. I screwed it a couple of times just to get it to move because it's all new from the factory, but it just lifts out. What this does is it blocks up obviously the other side. So when you go ahead and fit your cup, you can place it in for a right hander and then you would plug up that side. Or if you're a left hander, you would go ahead and fit it on this side and then plug that up. You can also move the cup. So when you're working flat, seeing as these airbrushes are designed for high detailed illustration. A lot of the time artists are working flat on the surface rather than using an easel and that's what this is great for and all the side feeds are really handy for that. Now I'll just push that in like so till it's snug and then I'm going to get my little bit there to block up the other side and she's all set up and ready to go. For the purpose of the test I will screw the pistol grip on as well. Again, just finger tight, and now we are ready to test drive the Takumi. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is screw the 1 8 fitting to the bottom of the pistol grip filter. I'm doing this before I hook the hose up to the compressor. You can see now this creates something for you to hold onto, so if you prefer that, rather than having the hose directly hooked up to the airbrush as normal, then you know definitely run with this filter. Plus, again, like I mentioned earlier, this is gonna trap any little bit of moisture that may get through your moisture traps before it hits your airbrush. So this is a great little last mode of defense. You can hear there's not a lot of air pressure. I've dropped my PSI right down to about 18 PSI. So I'm going to use some Indigo Blue by Trident to test this brush. You can use any particular brand of paint, just thin it to your liking. For the Trident, I like working with a 70 to 30 mix, which is 70% reducer, 30% paint, especially when airbrushing with fine detail brushes. I'm not going to totally fill it up. You can see how much I've got in the inkwell. You also want to make sure that that hole is always clear. If that blocks up, that's going to give you issues with your paint flow. We'll do some coverage first. Some thicker lines. You can see it still gets quite a bit of color on there pretty quickly. No problem at all. Okay, now let's go fine. So this is the first time I'm using this particular brush. I actually think brushes work better after a period of time. So you're seeing this one straight out of the box. I haven't done any artwork with it at all. So from my experience, the more time that you use it, the better it actually works and everything sort of wears in a little bit. My Micron that I've had for about 20 years performs even better now than it did when I first got it. And with these brushes as well, it's all about getting your paint mix right and your air pressure. So you can see some nice fine dots, lines, and to drain this, you just press down and that's gonna drain any moisture that's built up in there.
The Iwata Takumi is definitely a great brush, super smooth, great for getting fine detail. It is going to set you back a pretty penny, but you just need to make sure that that's viable for you. To continue your learning, be sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.